So as we come to the end of the 2049 season and we start closing in on the year 2050 in this Builder Nation series, this year has been one of achievements and disappointments. Part of me considered stepping down, and I still might step down from Lillstrom. I feel like we are stuck at the minute in terms of my development of the club. Maybe, well, guaranteed I've made a few decisions which were wrong, and a few signings which were maybe more following the heart over the head. But let's jump into the season, recap how it went, and see what we think after that. <laughs> Do you join me halfway through the season here where we look at our cup run and we end up going out in the quarterfinals. You can see here we beat Frigg, then Yev, then Horgerson and Olesund before finally coming up against the top flight side in Valerenga and they beat us 3-1 in extra time. Now, I put a strong squad out. I really did want a good cup run this year, but we just didn't look good. We did not look good and we really have struggled. But I think one of the reasons why I started to question my ability around this time, middle of July, there was some tr there was some positions becoming available. Starbeck, who were going to be in the Europe Conference League, their position became available, and I thought, shall we go to another club in Europe and see how we can do? Um, we had lost two of the last three to Odds and Mulder with a draw to Hamcam, and at this point, we dropped down to sixth place in the league, twenty two points. So we're not. Well, we're 10 points off Mulder, but we're not far off second place. But it was really upsetting. League champions two years ago, second place last year. Now down in sixth place. I really didn't know where we were going at this point. Now, we did then enter the transfer window. So let's just have a look see some of the transfers we brought in in the summer. So first off was Leon Alleman, who has a wonder kid personality. He, his only cons are his long shots. He must imp it says, must improve finishing. He has 17 for finishing. 17. And he got 6 and 13 for us in the league this season. He had a really poor start. And um, if I go to form, you can see, by the way, here. So, as a poacher, which he used at the start, he picked up two assists and one goal. Okay. When we changed him to advance forward, you can see two goals, two goals, a goal, 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 goal. So, part of his slow start was my fault. The wrong role for the player. Second sign in breaking the record for the club is Adam Corder. Um, 11 appearances so far for us. Comes in to play in central mid as a deep line playmaker. I think when I look at him, I do see he is a class above what we had. And this was one of them purchases which we had to make to stop that rot of the fact that we dropped down in the sixth place. We needed quality coming in who could get their foot on the ball and take control of games, especially with the new striker as well. And the final signing for 1.1 million from Copenhagen, he is going to play for our reserve team throughout next season. Uh, Anders Nielsen brought in, I think he could be a very good left wing back long term. Really, really good. So, brought him in 1.1 million. Let him develop there for a while. See how he does next year in the reserve team. Um, This 25 players registration mass, um, maximum does put a damper on trying to give these guys a few games during the season. But the fact our B team is in the, second, the third tier does mean they at least get some football. And the only out was Morristad, who was agreed to go to Sydney for 875k. Throughout this whole season, we've only sold one player, and we spent 15.75 million. So you can see we are ending the season in the red. Lost 5.2 million this season. We still have 30 million in the bank. By the way, exactly 30 million in the bank. Fairly impressive. So if we look at how the fixtures went after the look earlier on, where I considered walking away, we only lost one game for the rest of the whole season. So we beat Valerenga and Eggerson before draw to Bird a Glimt. Then victories over Starbeck, Grorud, Orsana and Rosenborg. A victory over Ulkissa before a 1-0 defeat to relegated Bran. It was just a strange game. Before victories over Sogendal, Vikin, Stjordals Blink, Odds, Hamkam, Mulder, Valerenga and Eggerson. But where did that put us? We were 10 points off top. 
we ended up winning the league title. We won the league title by one point over Bird of Glimt. Mulder dropped off massively, massively, finishing eight points behind us. But, oh, what a season. Like, mentally, you'll, you'll have all been there where you have a save where you're not feeling that connection anymore to a club, a team. And you kind of think, maybe it's time I move on. Like, my last title with Eggerson was 2044. So we've won... Two titles in the last five seasons on the game. Understandable, because we took over a really poor side, but yeah. Two titles and a second place in the last three years. Now, Bran going down. Part of me thought maybe we should drop to the second tier and take Bran back up. But then I think, no, we're too late in the cycle now, closing in on August, to be dropping to the second tier. I think the only club I would probably leave for is Rosenborg or Valerenga. I think taking over one of them two is a big job. It's a big job. So I think we're sticking to Lillstrom, especially because, without spoilers, we've started quite well in the in our European run. So I think it would be nice to see what we can do there. Um, but Rosenborg or Valerenga, I think, would be very interesting. I think Valerenga, only, yeah, they only have a B team as well who are in the playable leagues. So Rosenborg there teams as well are in the playable leagues now one thing to mention which is a bit disappointing we have a new stadium being built we are not getting it named after us a bit upsetting the tom lund stadium named after one of the heroes going to cost 30 million they have took out a 28 million pound loan which is going to cost us about 3 million a year in repayments it's going to be twenty two and a half thousand capacity stadium and it's going to be ready in three seas at the end of yeah, three more seasons. So we have three more seasons in the in the stadium we are in. Then we will move into this new stadium. Will we still be at the club then? I don't know. I really don't know. Um, if we go to the club history, you can see we've obviously had a Europa League runners-up and now two league titles, 47 and 49. So I've got to be pleased with that. I've got to be pleased with the fact that we are competing even though I don't feel like we at our best. So looking at how our B team is doing, it's a bit disappointing because I honestly thought our B team was going to go on and be crowned champions this year. But we fell off really badly near the end. Won 13, drew 5, lost 8. So that's a bit upsetting we didn't end up doing it. But our under-19s are the Norwegian League champions for the first time since we took over. So really, really pleased. Oh, we did have a very good intake, if you remember, in the last video. So definitely understand how we ended up being league champions. Really pleased with that. So that is positive that we do have some very good quality coming through. So looking at our squad, we did have an injury um, to our goalkeeper. So for the last game of the season in Europe, Johannes Surum actually made his competitive debut for us. Age only 16 after coming through the intake this season. It um, was nice to kind of give him a little bit of football. In terms of appearances for the season, as Sunder finished top appearance maker with 47 starts, 3 sub appearances. Now, second on the list, list was our goalkeeper, Lindstad, who did obviously pick up that injury right at the end. So he only made 46 appearances. Zadro with 45. Uh, Guttel's run, etc. after that. Top goal scorer for the season was Zadro with 23 goals from attack and midfield. 17 for Guttel's run. 10 for Alleman, who came in mid-season. So I am excited to see how we can do next year. I do think we've got an absolute gem here. For 1.9 million, we've absolutely pulled their pants down. And nine goals for Strumman, who has continued to do well. 120 grand we paid for him. And he is definitely securing himself as one of our regular first team players. In terms of assists, Zadro and Guttles were top on that as well with 15 and 10. And then Anderson from left wing back with nine, which I've got to be pleased with. But he only picked up five assists from left wing back in the league all season. He needs to step up in terms of assists. Now, he does want to leave. We've got a 6.25 agreement on him at the minute. We do have a contract extension of three years. So if no one comes in with any bids in the first few months next season, I'll activate it. The only issue is when you activate that kind of um, extension when they want to leave, it will kick off. So I'm just trying to delay that the best I can. But I've got to say, I'm really pleased with how our team is looking. Uh, Yanti has developed and learned the right wing back role really well 
So the fact that we've moved a striker from striker to right wing back, it's kind of unique, but he's only 21 and he's doing it very well. So I've got to say I'm pleased with our squad. I have ended up giving, if I just change it to age-wise, a couple of youngsters some game time. So Ennison, who came through the intake as well, has played nine games this season for us. He's... He's decent. It's very annoying when all the arrows are going down when he has been improving all season. Um, Martinic, who has been in the squad for the last couple of years, came through the intake at the start of last season, has continued to develop okay. He again has played some game time this year. Yama Mahmood came up into the first team, played a couple of league games as well as one sub appearance in the Champions League. Again, I think he can develop fairly, fairly well. We have a a decent looking squad now. I'm really, really pleased with how we're looking. Now, just to mention, remember, we did just discuss all them youngsters who have been coming through and the fact that we have Sundra and Anderson as well who came through the intake. The board are devastated by my development of the youth system and also the supporters are devastated. I'm very confused when you look at that. Devastated. Okay. One. Let's count them through. One. Two, three, okay, three, four, five, six, we have seven. We have seven players in our 25 man squad who came through the Lilstrom Academy. I would say that classifies as um, we've been using our youth system. Seven players who came through the academy. I'm very confused how they don't think. We're doing well. Now, another player to mention is Zandro. There's been a lot of offers coming in for him. He has scored a lot of goals. He's looking very, very good. I've told them 15 million they can have him. Um, some Premier League clubs came in. You can see Stoke, Utrecht and PSV at the minute interest. We paid 3.7. I'm not accepting under 10 million for him. We don't need the money. The only reason I would let him go is when he, if he kicks up such a fuss, we just can't keep him. But I would like to keep all of my whole squad going into the second half of the European campaign. Because like I say, we are looking quite solid in there. In terms of our under-23s, under our B team, sorry. We've got some good talent in here who is developing fairly well. So Dibé Obando, who's been playing football for our B team this season. We're still trying to get that fickle personality out of him. But for now, he's doing well. Developing decently. And should be getting some more first-team football next year. Harry Henriksen is a player who I'm considering moving up into the first team for next season. He's 17, and as a wing-back, he looks quite decent, and I do think he could develop quite a lot. The issue with it is that 25-man squad. We can't afford to have people who might only play the old game. Um, Nielsen, who we looked at, we signed. Simon Borg has had a good season, 17 goals and 21 for the B team. Continuing to develop. I am trying to work on his work rate. Doing, um, you can see here, endurance training. But just not getting any better with it. He just really is not getting any better with it. But I have to say, I'm very, very pleased with how our reserve team has done this season. So in terms of looking how the rest of the leagues have done. So Bran and Giroud went down. Quite a shock that Bran have gone down. Uh, from the second tier, Ranheim and Flora come up. Going down is Kongsvinger and Tromsø down to the third tier. So from the third tier, going up is Strumscott set are going back up. And also Strumman, or did they lose? Andal went up. Where's Strumman? Oh, they lost to Andal, okay. Then from the B division side of it, uh, Asker were the only team to go up. Ah, that's right, so... It was Vard Hogerson from the B from the third second tier stayed up. Okay, so only one side going up from that division, Asker, were them. In terms of the cup, that was won by Berda Glimt. So fair play to them picking up the cup, beating Mulder. So Mulder really did fall off. Not only did they throw the league away, they also then lost the cup final. So in terms of how our supporter stuff has gone, family is down twenty five percent. Fair weather has gone up, which is a bit concerning. Um, social media following has gone up by 26.4k. And as you can see, they are disappointed by our use of set pieces. And also that we're not developing players using the youth system, which... Just 
It's just not true. It's just not true. Me as a manager, I am looking absolutely mental attribute wise now. We've passed 1,200 games. We have a 62% win percentage, winning 759, drawing 202, losing 263. And we've scored 2,441 goals, conceding 1,279. Um, in terms of career achievements then, we've won 21 titles, 9 runners-up, 4 bronzers. If we go to job history, you can see, so at Eggerson, awards down the left, competitions down the right. In season 1, we won the third tier. In season 2, we went up in third place. Then it took us... What, eight years to win our first league title? Then we went two more years before we won the cup. After, sorry, three more years. Three second place finishes and a cup in there. Then we took over. After three second place finishes, we won the league every single year. Some cups, we won the Champions League. Then we moved on to Lillstrom. Leaving Eggerson in third, but only a couple of points off top. Uh, went on to Lillstrom, finished ninth and third, then first winning the double, then coming in second, and then first again just winning the top flight again. So we've had a very successful career so far. Um, we stayed a long time at our first club. We had that short stint as the Norway national team manager. Um, that job is coming up again. It came up a year ago, but they said we weren't even considered. It is coming up again, I think, soon. We will apply for it. But, um, yeah, I think we're going to continue to push on with Lillstrom for now. Like I said, there is a couple of jobs I would be interested in moving on to. Um, but I think if I had faith that the AI would not ruin the squad we've built, I would be more happy to jump around and build up loads of clubs within the league. But I don't trust them at all. But we'll see what happens over the next six months. I've been Paul, also known as the Northman. Thank you so, so much for your support. And I will see you next time.